Thank you for subscribing to Sheila Lives Out Loud. We're sharing some of our best lessons from the show as we count down to a new season. Here's my motivate. I think the last time we saw each other was on a stage, yes. on a reality TV show. <laughs> Project I fame. <laughs> miss you as principal, and I still you. think you did the best job ever. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but Karibu Sana, thank you for making the time to sit here with us. Thank and you. And education has always been something you believe in. Yes, you've I gone do. all the way up. You've got an MSc. Yes. But music has always been part of your journey. Right. Why? I believe that God gives us gifts. For some, it could be one or two. For others, it could even be 10. He has an expectation from all of them. They are not there to keep you company. They're there for you to use to change and transform this world. Mm -hmm. And so what I did was sort of a merger between um, my music and the education that I got. And by the way, when, when I went to the US to study, my parents told me, you're going to study, but you do music, we're not gonna pay. Right. And it was not because they didn't love my music. Music at that time was not paying. And they didn't want me to suffer, mm -hmm. you see. Secondly, I was a good scientist. All along the way, I have done um, my music but with social responsibility. I have sang for women. I've sang for peace, something I hold very dear in my heart. I used my music to try and transform my corner of the world. I'm a single parent with an adorable son. Um, he's 23 now and my best friend. My son though, was born with um, sickle cell anemia. It was diagnosed from birth. Um, the very interesting thing is um, I'm one of those mothers who um, read up a lot on um, how do you bring up a child well? <laughs> I think every mother tries to get as much information <sighs> as they Sometimes possibly can. Sometimes we get too much information. Yeah. And so I was one of those mothers who breastfed my son for three and a half years. <laughs> okay, most textbooks say by two years, it's a wrap, if not six months. <laughs> right. But guess what? It kept off his sickle cell. Oh. The sickle cell came and showed itself. After? After he stopped breastfeeding. Right. These are small indicators. Mm -hmm. The importance of breastfeeding mm. your child, you never know. What you could and be keeping them from. Keeping yeah. them from, and as he grew up, his sickle cell, most people didn't believe he was a sickler. He played rugby, rugby captain. He was strong, but once in a while, the sickling would mm. um, okay. put him down. But he said, I've got sickle cell, but that's not going to hold me back. I can recall that when he was um, doing his Form 4 under the British system, so he would go into IB. Um, in one of his exams, he had to go with morphine, and the adjudicator didn't notice that the morphine knocked him off. Oh, no. And then I started realizing mm. things are not quite right, and I went to our family doctor, and he started having seizures. And we were like, what, what is happening? Because that's the age where the sickle cell starts getting less and less. Mm -hmm. And um, to, for some people, it dwindles. His went to the extreme. So um, the doctors told me, my honest opinion, see a heart specialist. I crossed my fingers and said, you know, things will work out well. Well, the outcome was that 
He has a heart condition, a weak valve, and five months to live. And it wasn't even something that I was able to share with anybody because you become, you get into a state of shock. And all I know is I needed to pray. And my auntie, um, because they have the team of researchers coming here, they do a lot of research on different medical things. Um, so we, we got into a program with them and um, they started helping my son. Um, in the five years she passed on, but they promised her that my son would be well. And he has been, it's five years. From five months. From five been months. Five years now. Yes. Mm. It has taken a toll on us, but we are together and we are happy. And um, it's, it's made me look at life very differently. My son is the strongest person I know. I only know when he's in real pain, when I look into his eyes. Because what happens is with the sickling in the heart, he has permanent sickling. There isn't one day in his life that he's not sickling. So for five years, he's been sickling. Every day. Horrendous pain. One of the things that sometimes gives me sleepless nights, and I say this honestly, is I think of a child in Kibira or in Madare whose mother is a, maybe a maid and gives the child Panadol and says, I'll see you later. They go through immense pain. We have to put our sense of humanity to sickle cell. So there, there are many things health-wise that can be done to improve the lives of sicklers and let them not suffer so much, to improve their survival rate. Uh, for a sickler to survive even to 1821 is mm. difficult. Mm. So for my son to have survived this far? with a heart, That's God. it is purely by the, grace of, by the grace of God. Where we are now with, with my son is they've asked that the time has come for, for them to operate and um, correct, not maintain, correct the heart. And God has been very gracious. They're paying for the operation. We're not paying for the operation. Um, the operation um, is about 30 million, which would be out of our reach to an extent. I don't you know, know. Many 30, Kenyans with that kind 40, of health cover. You, you know, yeah. sicklers don't even have proper health cover, period. You know, they're in hospital all the time. But what we are trying to raise now is the airlift for him. And we are trying to raise about four million. Mm -hmm. My capacity is greatly diminished. Secondly, as the five years have gone, the cost of medication goes up as well. Goes up as well. So that has been also another factor that um, we've been dealing with, um, making sure he, he has the medicine and um, so what we are trying to do is we, we opened an M Mchanga account. Um, it is slow, but we are, I am very grateful for everybody who, I mean, there are people, uh, when we went to Radio Waumini, there are people who were donating 400, 200. It, and it, you know it why that something. touched me the most? Because it was coming from here. From here. It's what they have. Yes. 
Yes. And I have faith that we will raise the money. But as time goes, it gets more difficult. Mm -hmm. And so we're on a... Oh, you're yeah. on a timer and you must run and you must run fast. We must run, but mm -hmm. we know we're going to win this race. Mm -hmm. We are going to walk with you. We are going to stand with you. And Thank I'm going you. to ask everybody who is watching this show yes. and everybody who's going to log on to the social media sites, it's not about how much you're giving. It's the fact that you're going to give. That's all we ask. Yes. And As led by your father, because you never know. You never know when you need somebody to come out and stand with you and walk with you through that difficult situation. We've listened to your music and you've made us happy. It's time that we make you happy and Prince is your happiness. Prince, Prince is very strong in, and we have such faith. For the rest of this story, please click here.